Hello folks, welcome back with the foundation and dirt work done. Now it's time to turn to the actual clock to get this assembled and ready to go. So these holes here connect to the saddle right over there. And uh, there's good news and bad news. The good news is these are 7 16 14 holes, which is pretty standard. The tap is in my tap set for that. The bad news is the screws that go in here have to have a flat head to fit in a chamfered hole like this. And those don't exist. You cannot buy a 7 16 14 flat headed screw. So we have to do something about that. And there's basically a couple choices, one of which is to single point thread cut some screws by hand. And I have neither the time nor inclination to do that. The other is to try to turn this hole into something that's a little more standard. And option number two in this case is the clear winner. The difference between a 7 16 hole and what I've done here is tap this for a half 13 hole is not that much material removal. So I drilled this through with a 27 64 bit, which is the correct size pilot hole for a half 13 hole. And then I just tapped it by hand. And now we have the luxury of being able to buy an off the shelf screw that will fit this. This metal is a little bit of an interesting color. This is a silicon bronze fastener. And the advantage of silicon bronze is it is highly corrosion resistant. Stainless steel is uh, called stainless, uh, which does not equal non-staining. There is still some corrosion in some stainless steels. But the problem with stainless steel is it galls very easily. It sticks to other metals with any amount of friction. And it, this is just not a project I have any luxury of, uh, of having second tries if something like that goes wrong. So silicon bronze is a great option for this. It's expensive but it is going to give fasteners that are gonna last at least as long as I'm gonna care about this. So my next step is to go through and uh, finish retapping all of these holes to half 13. Uh, courtesy of Bolt Depot, I have a whole set of silicon bronze fasteners for the clock. And the near-term goal here is to assemble the head so that when the crane comes, it can be set on this column in one piece. To start assembling the head, we built a base that allows us to bolt the saddle to a work platform here that we can roll because the combined weight of this will be four or 500 pounds. We've got the inner bezels here, We're getting ready to assemble these to the ring. Unfortunately, they have to be assembled to the ring before they are put together on a saddle, which will make it heavy. And the other issue is how do we align these? Well, they've helped us out, and there is a little indentation in this ring here. And then on the other ring, there are a pair of those indentations right here. And these line up with those similar marks on the dials. Here is the 12 o'clock position of one of the dials. We can see two hash marks there. The other dial has one. And this is at the 12 o'clock position. So this gives us both the matchup of which dial goes to which bezel and how the bezels fit on the ring, which part of that bezel is up. It's been a little bit of a wrestling match, but we're working on getting the inner bezels lined up to the inner ring. The uh, dials are marked against the bezel, but the bezels were not exactly marked against the ring. So it took some trial and error there, but we got the, uh, the what's now the bottom bezel attached to the ring. Those are our silicon bronze fasteners. And now we're just working on lining up the uh, other side of the inner bezel. When these are lined up, we've got a lifting strap underneath and we will set that up onto the saddle. Using a material lift, we have the main ring set on the saddle and uh, we'll get this bolted up and then we'll put the crown on top. We uh, opted to increase the size of the caster board for a little bit more geometric stability on this, but we are in business. We've got the uh, inner bezel and ring mounted on the saddle. I'm going to get some silicon bronze bolts for these at some point. And next up is the crown. Here is the final piece rigged. This is the crown. We've got a strap under the bottom and some clamps to hold the strap from sliding since we're grabbing it uh, pretty low. The center of gravity is, is much higher in the part. The lift is ready and we're gonna set it on the rest of the carriage.
Well, we have a successful assembly of the head. The crown made it on top of the main body of the clock. We've got to get our strap out, but other than that, we've got a couple bolts anchoring this far side, and we can lift on the other end to remove the strap. And this is gonna be great. Really happy that this went safely and relatively easily. Just wanted to show off, this is what uh, Matthew's Brilliant Gold paint looks like when it needs to be mixed and you don't have a professional paint shaker. Might be here a while. Just checking in, we've got the gold masked off for where we want to paint it. We've done some research and there's uh, different interpretations of what parts were actually painted gold. And uh, this is what we decided. We've got the uh, perimeter of this uh, false door We've got the little corner of the top of the roof here, uh, some of the rings on the column, and the base. I certainly don't claim to be any kind of skilled painter, so this is after the first coat. It's gonna take a couple coats to get good coverage here. Seems like you kind of push the gold around and uh, it takes a little bit of uh, layering to get it thick, but that's okay. I had to buy a gallon, which would paint this whole clock about 15 times. So a little bit of uh, extra layers isn't gonna be a problem for material usage. Here's the upper motion works of the clock. It's a little bit out of frame because this is big. Uh, this, I believe, was serviced by the prior owner, but it's been a while this clock has been in storage. So uh, I've got a chance to take it apart again and we'll take a look and see how it's been put together. There is the drive shaft right here that is pinned in. I'm going to pull that, and then I think we can take this top off. There we go. We've got a bushing in the bottom of this, and yeah, this oil is a little crusty. So we're going to replace all that. Just taking a look at how this is assembled. Not a whole lot to this. Uh, so I think we will just do our regular cleaning procedure, try to get all the old oil off, and then re-oil it and put it back together. I'm going to take a few minutes to try to polish these shafts. The better the surface finish is, the longer they will last before rusting. The clock I'm intending to keep at a relatively low humidity, so I don't think it's that big a deal for corrosion. But since we have the opportunity, I'm just going to sand these off and uh, treat it like a minor pivot polishing operation. Okay, here's something I've discovered that I think probably needs attention. This has a lot of vertical slop. And remember that this actually runs upside down. So if I turn the movement over, you can see this shaft actually rides on this bushing but it sticks and it actually makes contact around the circumference of this shaft. Here's a better look at the underside. We've got this steel shaft that carries the weight of the drive shaft, which is some eight feet long that hangs off of this. And over the last 120 years, I believe this has actually worn away into this brass bushing here. And so now there's still enough clearance that the clock runs but it pulls this gear down so the teeth don't mesh as far as they usually did. And it also creates a whole lot more contact surface. And it actually, with the surface tension of the grease here, it actually sticks a little bit. So I think we need to do something about this. Um, there, it's not really practical to fill this in. So the choices are basically to mill this flat and then put a brass washer on top or to try to fit a brass washer in this inside dimension. So we'll see if we can make something like that on the lathe. I have machined a washer that fits pretty nicely uh, here and uh, against the bushing. However, as expected, we now are short on end shake on here. So what we need to do is go over to the bridge port and we are going to mill this off to get rid of this worn in channel here.
All right, now we have a new surface. Bridge port and a little bit of polishing gave us a nice new surface here. And we have our custom washer, which fits that pretty nicely. The other area of wear was the bottom of the shaft itself. This was actually fairly chewed up. So I uh, polished that again, cut a little material off to give it a good shoulder. And uh, we'll put it together and see how much end shake we have. It's our custom washer. That feels really nice. That actually doesn't, doesn't stick anymore. I haven't greased it yet, but uh, I think that is going to be a noticeable difference in the amount of energy that this will take to drive now that that shaft isn't being uh, sucked into the worn bushing.